All right, in this video, I will be cleaning between the layers of glass on this GE stove. Stove is a little bit older, it came with the house. I've got a few Norwex cleaning products, but really you can use any kind of cleaning product you want for glass or degreaser. Those shop towels are useful, and I got a few extra Norwex chamois towels. So you can see I've cleaned the exterior on both sides of the glass still a lot of marks in between so when I put my hand through there it helps focus the camera but you can see those brown streaks basically it looks like some sort of oil kind of burnt onto the inside of the glass so I'm going to clean these hinges as well but to open up these hinges there's a lever that lifts up so you can see that little lever action right there and on both sides you just lift that lever and then that's going to allow the door to be removed from the stove so you can see you lift the door to about, I don't know what that is, 45 degrees, and then it'll sort of pull off the hinges and it pulls off without any real effort. The door is a little bit heavier than I sort of thought, probably in the 20 pound range, so just be careful of that. Now I'm going to take a meter stick. So you want to use something firm and you can see that there are two slots in the door at the bottom. And you can slide something like your meter stick or yard stick in between the panes of glass. The other thing I found, I'm going to show, I could actually get in between two different panes of glass here. I'm not sure if all stoves are like that, but if you angle the meter stick down, it'll go to the lower gap between the two panes of glass. If you angle it up a little bit, it'll go in between the other layer of glass. So the first thing I tried was this Norwex towel and I'll show you two different methods of securing it. I found that this Norwex towel was too thick so I couldn't actually use this in the end. But basically you just wrap the towel around the meter stick, take some elastic bands, get those elastic bands real tight so that the, so the towel is a little bit larger than the elastic bands, just like that, and then slide it in between the panes of glass after you put some cleaner on it, but it didn't fit. So I ended up using shop towels. So just one shop towel wrapped around itself, sprayed with a bunch of spray cleaner. Right now I'm using the degreaser and then just rub it in between the panes of glass. What I found was the upper pane of glass was a little bit loose and then the lower pane of glass, which I'm on right now, was actually really tight on both sides. So. It's going to probably depend on the make, the model, all that kind of thing, on how tight the panes of glass are. So just be cognizant of that. And you can see it does a pretty good job at getting all that grease out. And the first product I used was degreaser spray, just to work that in between the panes of glass. After the degreaser spray, I used this all-purpose cleaner. Again, it's by Norwex, but you can use whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you use to clean the outside of the glass should probably work on the inside of the glass. And just like for the degreaser, I spray it down and then slide it right back through that slot, either through the upper pane or the lower pane of glass. And then I just work it around and make sure that all the grease and all the marks are coming off. And quite honestly, this method did a pretty good job. And the last thing I do is take a dry paper towel with nothing on it and then just rub that in between the panes of glass to make sure that there's no streaks or cleaner residue inside of it. Once that's done, the hinges just sort of drop back into place. And I'll show you, it's got a very distinctive sort of note. I don't know what that is, 45 degrees or so. So as soon as it hits that point, you can really feel that the door doesn't close properly and it just sort of lifts up the hinges. So to put those hinge locks back down, just put the door all the way down, push down on those little hinge locks, and then they hold the door in place so that it won't pop out once it hits 45 or so degrees. It didn't do a perfect job, although it did a better job than I thought it might. I would give this maybe a, a 7 out of 10 for cleaning. 
there's just a few spots where I couldn't seem to get the marks off for whatever reason. I'll put the hand through the glass there again. The main, uh, all those big grease marks are definitely gone. There's a few spots, and honestly, I don't really think you could tell from the camera, but I am going to show you the other method here. So very inconveniently, these are Torx screws, and there are two of them, and they go right where the oven door handles connect to the uh, front of the oven. So remove one of them, and then I'll remove the other one. I can't say for sure if all ovens use Torx bits. Uh, yours may or may not. Once those two bolts are out, the oven just separates. There is a bit of a rubber gasket residue, so it kind of needs to be pulled apart. But once they pull apart, it just sort of lowers down, and it's super greasy and gross in there. So I'll clean all that as well. But you can see there's still a hinge on the bottom of this thing, so there's three metal hinges. You need to be careful not to uh, f let it flex all the way down. So once you separate it like that, just be ready to hold it at sort of the uh, 45 degree angle while you're cleaning. So I recommend having all your cleaning products handy. For this, I again use the degreaser and then I use the all-purpose spray. Then you can see that I've sprayed it down and I'm just wiping it back down with the shop towels. Now you can actually remove this pane of glass by removing those two bolts on one of the sides and then just leaving the bolts attached on the other side. So there's two metal brackets that hold this uh, second pane of glass in place. So I'm going to pop that off as well. Not all ovens will have this configuration and I'm not even sure if all General Electric ovens have this configuration. It is very convenient to just pop those two screws off and then slide that piece of glass out. And then with that piece of glass removed, I'll just get the, the next pane of glass. The one that I'm cleaning right now is actually a double pane. It appears that you could probably pull that one apart as well, but I don't think there's any reason to do so. It also looks to be sealed, so I don't think that you're going to have a whole lot of residue in between those two panes of glass, but if you do, then you might have issues. So for this, I used the all-purpose cleaner, then I used two different Norwex cloths. Then for this inner pane of glass, I used the all-purpose cleaner and a shop towel, then came back across with one of those Norwex cloths with just water on it and then use this Norwex buffing cloth to do the final buff on the glass. And then obviously it's two-sided so I'll flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. All-purpose cleaner, shop towel, and then use the Norwex cloth. If I'm being totally honest, I think that this was actually faster or at least just as fast and easy as using the stick method coming from the bottom and it 100% does a better job. So I would say whatever you want to do, but in the future, if I have to clean in between these panes of glass, I'm going to go for this method and I'm not going to go for the stick method just because this actually does a pretty decent job. And once it's all clean, slide it back in the bracket and put those two bolts on. And then for connecting the two layers of the doors, once again, put those two bolts in place and use the torque screwdriver to put them back in place. So again, put that hand in the way. Uh, this obviously did the trick and that glass is super clean now, though it's hard to see. Again, the camera has difficulty focusing on the different layers of glass, but with the hand, you can see that it is pretty good. Anyway. Thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.